Okay. All right, so we're calling the Community Preservation Meeting to order January, uh, January 18th, Wednesday, 2023. Um, this is a hybrid meeting. Ms. Counting. Got it, got it. And are any members remote? I don't know. Alicia, there's no one remote, is there? We should be able to see them if they, they should pop up if we see them. Yes. No, they'll just pop up. Oh, okay. Um, our agenda tonight, we have news and mail, public or member input. Um, we have a few project eligibility, eligibility and funding requests, uh, Town Forest Boardwalk from Conservation, Total House at 550 King Street Consultant, 12 Robinson Road Consultant, which is through um, Historical Commission, um, the Houghton Building window restoration, which we won't have tonight, and any others that may come before the committee this evening. And 12 Robinson Road, did you say that? Did I say that? 12 Robinson Road. Um, number four is to, um, we need to vote to amend the CPA budget that was voted um, at the annual in, uh, November town meetings for a uh, change in the statement, or lower than estimated state match. Um, so Alicia has requested that. Um, to discuss some steps to present a move to a 3% surcharge on property tax at annual town meeting. Um, any other discussion of finances? And then any projects? We won't have any minutes tonight and then a future meeting schedule. So um, there was no mail, no news. Anyone have any exciting CPA news? Um, any input? So let's move to the uh, eligibility request. We have Amy Green with us tonight. Um, so I don't know if you want to present your project. It was sent to all the members, I think. Hopefully, okay, I have two copies here, too, if anybody wants to look at a hard copy. Papers? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And Amy, are you here through a committee or a member organization? Amy's our yeah. for conservation. So I'm Amy Green on the uh, conservation agent for the town. Um, is this? Okay, here. Yes. Yep. It, it picks you up. So, okay. Um, so, uh, I'm here tonight to ask for some more funding for the town forest boardwalk. Uh, you previously funded um, with regard to boardwalks as part of the Cloverdale boardwalk to finish off the long strength uh, length that was done under a DCR grant, um, as well as uh, town forest boardwalk four um, last year. And we're looking now to finish them off. Uh, with Town Forest Boardwalk 1, which is basically the entryway boardwalk. Uh, my husband and I had thrown down uh, some supplies there that uh, Amazon had given us when they put their wooden guardrails down um, so the scouts could get out there, so people could at least get out there. And it's not in good shape and it's not particularly safe. So it's time to get back in there and, and do the final boardwalk, which has already been permitted through the Conservation Commission. Um, it is uh, what did I say, 400 feet, I believe. And the cost for the materials was 12640 12, Um, We would be at getting someone to build this for us, uh, Dana Gray, who did Boardwalk 4, and his estimate was 9600 And we did put a, about a 4,000, 20% contingency on top of that. Because um, I know at least in action, we like seeing a contingency so they don't have to come back all the time. Um, so again, so the total is 26,476. I have asked the, actually the electric department, they have a community grant for $7,000 and they are meeting next week. So hopefully if we get that grant, I can knock that off, off the, uh, the top of this place right there. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's very broad strokes on if you had any questions or wanted more information, so I can. But wasn't there another, wasn't there another part to it? Not just that the, there's another, at the Hartwell or our the, so this is part of uh, basically sort of a, a three-year boardwalk program to try to get some of the the conservation lands walkable at all seasons. So uh, this and boardwalk one over at Hartwell are the two that have not been finished yet. Hartwell, uh, someone has stepped forward and will probably donate materials for that, and we're hoping to get a scout or the land stewards to build it. So. There is no ask here for it. We got that covered. This is just 
the town part. I took okay. a walk on Brown's Woods property over to Paulson Way, and yes, that spot right up Harvard Ave needs some boardwalk. Yeah, so a scouts, um, I don't remember who it was, did the steps that are in there, which, which were definitely needed. Um, and from my point of view, I kind of left Boardwalk One to the end because I didn't want people to get into the woods easily and then realize they can't do like Boardwalk Two. So I wanted the rough one up front so people know what they're getting into. But but now we can back our way out and finish it off, hopefully. So who were you hoping to get the support grant from? Uh, the Littleton Electric Light Department has a community grant, uh, which I only just found out about. Um, so I put in for $7,000 and the, uh, the commissioners are meeting next week. And I believe they will go next week on that. So that would come off of the 26th? That would come off of the 26th, yeah. Yeah. Questions? It's a great project. And he's putting a lot of work for it and uh, forward to it going in place. As have the land stewards who I see here in terms of building and cutting trees and making trails. So it's, it's been a lot of effort all around. It'll be a great project in the um, photo of the child running on it. That was a great <laughs> photo. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. But I have permission to use it. So yeah, it's yeah. not my child. It's a grand child. And um, it's coming from recreate the recreation budget. Yes. Bucket. So all yeah. the bucket rather than is everyone okay with that? So you're the recreation guy. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm still wrapping my head around the distinctions between whether it's a big recreation or open space, I guess, but it's yeah. not like recreation. It is a recreational project. I'm wondering if maybe we could take it from undesignated this time around, then, just so it's not impacting the park and rec budget for their projects. Well, I mean, this is what we had talked about a bit, whether um, I don't know, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Yeah, my gut feelings, my gut reactions take it from recreation, it's a recreation project because it kind of sets a bad precedent if we take every project could come before us and say, let's take it out of undesignated so we don't use the other budget. So that's kind of a concern. And you still need to classify it anyway, in any case. So open, open space under the CPC is almost primarily for purchasing open space. Okay. Um, it's not developing the open space. So recreation has sort of the active recreation and passive recreation pieces to it. Um, so it, it, it there does get a lot, of, and certainly the lion's share of the recreation bucket goes to the active parks and recreation yeah. piece of it. So, would this application be for spring town meeting? Yes, I assume spring town. Okay. So we have, um, and this is just the funding request since we've already gone through the eligibility. I included both in there, there just. In they case you them, so they're both in there, both forms. Oh, yes, that's fine. Okay. Um, do we want to have a motion? I'll make a motion that we deem the uh, Town Forest Boardwalk project as an eligible CPA project. I second it. Okay. Um, motion by Andrew, second by Linda. Oh, we don't have to do a roll call anymore. That's exactly a point. Um, all in favor of the eligibility request as submitted by Ann Green, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And then follow that up with the funding request. I'll make a motion that the board uh, fund the Town Force Boardwalk uh, One projects. I'll second it. All in favor of the motion is uh, read by Andrew and seconded by Linda. Oh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Right. And I will let you know if I hear about the community grant. Okay. As soon as I hear about the community grant. Okay. All right. So let's go back much. to town. Thank you.
Did you uh, meet your Andrew back in person? Yeah. <laughs> Soon enough, right? Another couple months. March 31st. Oh my gosh, that'll be so <laughs> weird. Motion <laughs> come with uh and money reference, or was it to fund the project? Yeah, to fund the the, the 26. If, if, if they end up getting the grant, we'll just submit it for whatever the difference. I'll submit you a letter. A letter, yeah. It. And then we'll just adjust it. Is it okay if I just say to fund the project? Yeah. yeah. Um, so why don't we do the Linda's projects next? Have a lovely evening. Thank you, Amy. So um, I think I'll start with 12 Robinson Road. Um, the unusual thing about this project is that it's it's the pending sale of the land. The town currently owns the land uh, and the property. Um, this request would be pending sale of the land to a private owner. So that's a little unusual, but I wanted to bring it forth now because I, I would like this to go into Springtown meeting, which is why I'm bringing it forth now. If the land is not sold, then this would be a moot point, but it's almost definite that the land is gonna be sold, the town wants to sell it. And um, so there is a potential buyer, which we've met with, the historical commission has met with the buyer. Um, so because the property was purchased with community preservation funds, there has to be a permanent historic preservation restriction on the property. Um, the Littleton Historical Commission is part of the historical preservation restriction. There's a grantee who's, who would be the owner of the property and there's the grant, I'm sorry, the grantor is the owner of the property. The grantee is the Littleton Historical Commission, which is charged with enforcing the historic preservation restriction to make sure it's complied with. This is the first time the historical preservation, I mean, this is the first time the historical uh, commission has played this role. And so um, in part because it's the first time, um, we feel that we need assistance from historic preservation expert. Um, we've interviewed one person and I've talked to a second person um, and we feel that we need assistance from this expert to help us review design plans and also review on-site rehabilitation of the building itself. Um, there'll be a lot of renovation, a lot of restoration, rehabilitation work done on the building. Oh, I thought you had a question. <laughs> um, so we are asking, so um, the cost is less than it was. The original cost was 9,000 something. The cost that we're now asking the CPC for is $4,201. Um, the potential owner, it will put up $5,000 assuming he buys the property, which is good. Um, the reason the cost went down is because after I initially talked to the consultant and she provided an initial, initial cost estimate, she then met with the historical commission and based on our discussion with the commission and her, she actually lowered her costs by a fair amount. So um, the costs we're asking less now than, than we were previously. Um, so. Is this the same project that involves building on the back part of the property? It does. Okay. Uh, we have no jurisdiction over the back, the new, the new construction we have no jurisdiction over. Um, but it's the same project. It's the same project, correct. This would only, the historic preservation restriction covers only the, the, the original house and barn, which is the front building, the current existing building, not the new construction out back. But the owner will take possession of the whole real estate. The correct. Yeah, okay. Correct. And including in in the proposal will be renovation and restoration of the existing house. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, Linda, I'd like to understand. Um, given that this is an entirely private project, the town will not get any benefit from it. Um, I just don't understand how any CPC dollars could possibly be used. So, 
I'm just wondering why the developer shouldn't pay for the entire cost because he's the only one who's going to be benefiting from that. Well, that's well, uh, I don't think that's a correct statement. I could see how you think that, but I think the benefit is that the town will keep this historic resource. We, the town, the historical commission is has to make sure that this historic resource is is kept as a as a significant historic resource. Other towns pay nonprofit corporations fifty thousand dollars to do this. Um, the, the owner does not pay for for this historic preservation restriction to be enforced. The towns have it either has to be the historic commission or a nonprofit organization that has professional expertise in enforcing historic preservation restrictions. And the towns are the ones that pay for that nonprofit group, not the owner. So, so the town, if I heard you correctly, the benefit to the town is that this structure is retained, preserved, restored, preserved, even though it doesn't have any form of functionality or access to the town. That's correct. Um, Historic preservation is actually considered a public good. Um, so that's that's one part of this. Um, and then other parts of it are, I read over the, the Community Preservation Act, and it includes real property interests that are covered by the Community Preservation Act. And real property interests include easements and restrictions. And this is a historic preservation restriction. So um, the act does, does cover that. And if you don't get community preservation funds, if you need to hire a consultant, it's going to come out of town funds anyway, because it's the historical commission. So they'd have to raise, you'd have to get a bump up in your budget to be well, able the to town pay would have to pay the, the town, would, the town pay. would have to pay fifty thousand yeah. dollars in order to have someone play the role that the historical commission has agreed to play. So we're going to pay for it one way or the other. And we looked, I looked around for a group that would play this role. Nobody wants to do it. <laughs> so. What, what kind of asset did you say it was when you were recording that? It, it's called a real property interest. Okay. Thank you. And the the consultant services are for the build or for the, the restoration and build out? The, the consultant service would be to help the historical commission who has to enforce this restriction. The consultant would help the historical commission review design plans. She has the expertise to do this. Um, she's done this all over the place. Um, um, she would help us review design plans, and then she would actually come on site multiple times during the construction, the rehabilitation, um, to to review what what they plan to do and what they did do to make sure it complies with the restriction. But once the it, yeah, so the understand it, and then once the redevelopment construction preservation is complete that's the end of the that would be the end of her role correct yeah and the historical society feels like they can maintain the, the commission the commission sorry the commission can maintain the ongoing we we think so um if we don't we would look to hire a consultant again to help us um but because yeah, it's when 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 the property changes hands, you'd have to go in and do, or are you going to do annual? Inspection? Annual or minimal, you know, minimally, we will go in annually. Um, as you know, this, there's the developer who's renovating this, rehabilitating this, will eventually sell it to somebody or a homeowners association. And at that point, we will have to, uh, the historical commission will have to go in at least annually to make sure it's the restriction being complied with. If we think that there's issues, we would seek to hire a consultant to help us with if any issues come up. Linda, is there a, a, an understanding of what is to be preserved yes. and what is allowed to be changed? Y yes. Is it only the exterior? Is no. It... 
Um, there is a, we, uh, I drafted, well, with the, based on discussions of the historical commission, I drafted a historical preservation restriction with one of the town lawyers. Mm -hmm. We've been working on it for about two years. Um, it's just about done. Um, um, it includes exterior and interior. Um, there are specific interior features that we want to save. Exterior is important because that's what people get to see. Um, but it's both exterior and interior. During the process of rehabilitation, however, we will be consulting on an ongoing basis regularly with the architect, the owner, the architect, and the who's working on it, the project manager, whatever, um, to make sure, you know, things are going the way they're supposed to. And the consultant would help us do that. Because there's always issues in historic buildings about things like windows, which... Yes. Um, yeah, there's... Difficult. Yeah, there's things in the preservation restriction about windows that are the things, um, but the, the restriction is not rigid. It's not set in stone. It's what what we want to be saved, and if it, if things can be saved, they will be. If things, if when they open up a wall and they see, you know, some there's a problem or whatever, things can be changed as long as the historical commission approves the change. There's in the in the restriction, there's major and minor changes. Minor ones the owner can do on their own without asking us. Major ones they have to come to us before they do any change. That's in the restriction. What is the proposed use of the building after it's it will it will probably be residential? That's what that's what they're proposing. Some family homes? Condos. Condos. Yeah. The house will be one condo, the barn will be another condo. Okay. Yeah. For the sake of the minutes, I just wanted to describe the project on your application that says 12 Robinson Road Historic Preservation Consultant. So that's the title of the project. In in our um, agenda, it also references Total House. At Total yeah, Houston that's a separate Street. project. Yeah. Total House is a separate one. I'm going to discuss okay. that after we finish discussing 12 rounds in a row. Excellent. So um, from a timing perspective, um, in terms of trying to stick with our deadlines, because we don't have the application right now. Um, so that would technically put it into the fall town meeting. No, no, I, I, we would have to have another meeting in February. I would request that. In the past, uh, I know that we've tried to make sure that our, our projects were in order for the spring town meeting by, I think, January 15th. But yeah, that's what I saw here. That's, um, that guideline has been a little tricky in years past just because of uh, demand for projects before the spring town meeting. Well, the other thing is I would have brought the funding here, but we've been we've had many conversations about this committee should first approve the eligibility, then at the next meeting approve the funding. That's why I didn't bring it tonight. So, <laughs> well, yeah, well, in this case, we wanted to make sure that everybody was okay. With yeah. The, and yeah. I mean, you've done a lot of legwork. The <laughs> home has been fired, right? So, I mean, how can we fund something that hasn't been acquired yet by the. It would be pending sale. If the sale doesn't go through, it would be canceled. Um, so, just a suggestion, maybe we consider. Addressing the deadline, January fifteenth. <laughs> yeah, and, well, I mean that's, that that would be great, but it's never worked that way. Yeah. Well, so part of the reason is because I I've, I've seen this maybe go through a bit of crunch time when stuff is provided to us yeah. at the eleventh hour, and that makes it incredibly challenging to try to make solid, thoughtful decisions. So that's the only thing that I was looking to because I I haven't seen that January fifteenth. So well, that's what would be ideal. You know, especially like eligibility come in by January, and then so we'd have February that we could. Because a lot of times it's like when I'm on my way home, I think of a question. Right. So it's nice to get something up front. We can mull it over, make sure everything is okay. But in this case, I mean, if they're bringing it in January, we can vote on it in February, the project in yeah. February, and still have not that much time, but a little bit of time before the March. Well, because. Some of the timing has to go along with the award, right? Yes. Beyond there. So I'm just wondering out loud whether or not having a timing that kind of coincides with that. So that, like what you said, where the one month is the eligibility request, the next month is the application. 
So just a thought. No, I mean that's that's how we came up with that January 15th date, but it it's and happened. unfortunately, it, other projects often come before us at the last minute. It, it's not what we want, but that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we, they won't, but they do. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions or concerns over this? Well, down the road, uh, pointing to the restriction, whether or not this particular person purchases the property, we will have a restriction on the home, which the commission will be charged with enforcing. When someone buys it. When somebody buys it. So it's something that we'll have to plan for eventually, whether or not this person actually does carry out what they plan to do. So it'll be a necessary a necessary process at some point. Mm -hmm. And if we vote the project through and something falls through with the sale, the project just sits there until we either rescind our vote or the funds get used. So, um, you know, it's not something that has to be um, spent by, you know, the end of the year or anything. So it gets hit in a holding pattern. It, yeah, basically. Yeah, it just sits okay. So kind of set aside until it gets used or this committee rescinds the vote and puts it back into the bucket. Okay, that's good to know. All right. We wanna vote on the oh this is just the eligibility and then next next month we'll vote on the uh, project itself. I'll make a motion to support the eligibility Reservation consultant for 12 Robinson Road. That's the right way. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. All in favor of the eligibility request for 12 Robinson Road consultant, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Thank you. And more of the same, sort of, but not really. Yeah, sort of the opposite situation <laughs> with the title <laughs> house. It's much, the title house is much simpler. So does everyone know what the pedal house is? It's across from CBS. It's on IBM. What was the IBM property? It's green with orange shutters. It's, it looks really nice. Um, so this is also pending a sale in the opposite direction. This request is pending um, a, not a sale, sorry, gift. Um, there is talk of the current private owner, developer of the, of the former IBM site, gifting the Tuttle House to the town. Um, if this gift goes through, this application, that this would be active. If the gift does not go through, it would be canceled. Um, and again, I'm asking for it now because I really would like it go, to go for spring town meeting. Um, so, um, so, the Historical Commission has been approached um, by the town administrator um, saying that the town, if this building is gifted to the town, town would like to move some of their departments into the Tuttle House. And in order to do that, it would be a public use building at that point. In order to use it for, for that purpose, the building would have to be brought up to code, including American Disabilities Act and other building codes, okay? Um, and the cost of that, the estimate, this is a few months ago, it's just an estimate. I don't think they know how much it would really cost you. The cost was around a million dollars. Now, I don't know, you know what that's based on. <laughs> what um, we, the Historical Commission has been approached and asked that they would like to either use historic funds or borrow against historic funds to upgrade the building to building code. Um, now, that's for, for the Historical Commission, that's a lot of money. <laughs> um, so before we would might say yes to such a thing, we want to know that there's enough historical significance left in that building to use or borrow against historic funds. There's been a ton of restoration done on that building. That's why it looks so nice. 
the exterior, the interior looks really nice, but we don't know how much of that, how much of the original or close to original historical significance remains. So we want to hire a consultant to come in one time for a couple of hours, look at the building and let us know if there's historical significance remaining in that building. If there is, then, then we would consider, we would discuss whether to use or borrow against historic funds to upgrade the building. Um, one thing I found out more recently, which I did not know, is that the Community Preservation Act under um, rehabilitation is it covers it covers intended uses, including but not limited to improvements to comply with the American with Disabilities Act and other federal, state, or local building codes. So, so the, this is this expert consultant would come in, look at the building, let us know if it's historic, still historically significant, and also what possible other, other historic preservation or rehabilitation work she would recommend that we would do. So that's the request, and the request is now down to six hundred and eighty dollars. So. Um, yeah. Um, there's a, I mean, if you if you upgrade a building to ADA and other things, um, that may mean adding an elevator and changing the, the stairs completely. Because the, um, I haven't been in that building, but I'm sure that given the age of it, the tread and riser ratio doesn't. They did so much building. internal uh, yeah. renovation that it might be the stairs are okay. okay. I don't know. But. The elevator, probably yes, or a lift or something. Yeah, something. I'm just asking that if bringing it up to usable condition is going to make a mess of whatever historical stuff is there, just because that's the only place the elevator or the lift would go. So that would be something that the consultant would help us okay. understand. Now, from my understanding, a lot of projects put the new put that kind of stuff yeah, out on the, on the outside or in a little chamber or not you know directly right. in the inside so that might be one option i don't know and i'm not saying that we'll you know we would definitely vote to approve this we just mm -hmm. want to know if it's something we want to consider well getting a consultant is certainly with one right that's what we thought there's i'm just trying to think about is that has the The uses that they have in mind, I guess it, it depends what, what the level of historic value inside still remains mm -hmm. as to whether or not the intended uses are compatible with that space. Is that something that also the um, I think discuss? the uses are compatible. I mean, it's been so restored inside that. I, I think the uses would be, you know, whatever they want to use for would probably be compatible. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would be a concern. Hopefully they would consider that. Well, that's correct. Quite a use. Yes, and we can have discussions about that. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because, we because we're have... part of the town, so we should yeah. discuss that. Yeah. Yeah, because didn't someone say there's like a fireplace in there that still looks nice? But where is that in relation to... Like the big room because they're talking about know. LCTV going in there. So. And there, there have been other um, possible uses as yeah. well that have been proposed. Um, I don't remember where the yeah. fireplace is. I'm just thinking, like as Saul said, they build a studio in there. <laughs> you know, you have this ultra technology studio, and then you have this old fireplace. Does that really make the old fireplace a, a real asset? Be the centerpiece, centerpiece of yourself. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> probably what they would do. <laughs> Santa Claus, goes, yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions, concerns? I guess the other uh, is is the it seems like a very low amount for a consultant. Is that sufficient 
for what is needed. Is the only yeah, okay. yeah. We met with her in person, the whole commission, um, and she just she saw she looked at the house and from the outside she didn't go in. Um, she thinks just a couple of hours of her being there, looking around, taking photographs would be enough. So, yeah. She was quite impressive. I ended up, I went to the, the meeting and she obviously knows what she's doing. So it's easier when you know what you're doing to go in and look and write a report. And there are no other questions, Anna? What's up? Is, is this gift from the developer contingent on any other um, developments or changes in town? Is it linked to you know, the Shattuck building or anything that he's proposing to do? On I, other I don't side? know. I don't think it is, but I don't really know the answer to that. I know he doesn't have much use for that building. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay. Right. You want a motion for the eligibility request? I'll make a motion for you to support the eligibility request for a consultant for the title house at 550 King Street. Second. That's <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's right. <laughs> Um, all in favor of the uh, eligibility request for the Tuttle Road, Tuttle Road, Tuttle House Consultant, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Staying? Thank you. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, the Houghton Building window restoration, we're not quite ready. We'll probably submit an um, eligibility request at the next meeting. We're trying to get some quotes um, to know the scope of the project. Any other projects that were brought? I haven't heard of anything else. No. Hi, next meeting. Okay. Um, what did you say about the window restoration or this thing? Um, it's it's pending. I don't I don't have a. a we're we're trying to get some more information on the okay. project before we. Well, then. All right. So the next item is uh, was asked. Uh, requested by Alicia. Um, I don't know, Alicia, if you want to explain what happened with the state match. Yes. So there's a couple of things. The state match came in less than we expected. And the second thing is when we first voted our percentages at annual town meeting May 2nd of last year, it included the state match. So when we voted the percentages in the Springtown meeting, we then voted a different percentage for the state match. So I had to break out the state match that was included in the original, take that out, take the new percentage values you voted at special town meeting and reallocate it. So that's the difference. So if you actually look at it, it's not gonna come out to exactly what the state match was. So I tried to break it down so you could see the differences from annual town meeting percentages versus the special town meeting percentages showing our reallocations in addition to the state match. Even with the extra $20 million that they put in? Even the what? Even with the extra twenty million dollars, the state added to the CP. I know, and it was awful because when they gave us an original estimate to use for the state match percentage by the state, and then the state couldn't come up with a number, which we usually have by special town meeting in November, and they came in with a much lower number. So all the CPC communities had to write a memo to get their tax rate set, including us, saying we would not spend more than what was allocated. And then we got this bonus payment that came in after I had to do that whole memo. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Um, yeah. There's a copy. I'd love to see it just because I can't find the email. I know. And I just, and of course, I don't know. Like, 
Someone on the right computer here. Uh, um, Carolyn sent the email on Monday, January 9th at 10 10 p.m. with the breakdown. I'm not sure I can. Oh, okay. Thank you. Maybe, maybe can I not know if I can copy and paste it over here? I forgot that I'm not on a on my own computer. Oh, okay. <laughs> but too many computers. Do you have it now? No, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can read it over here. It's, uh, since we don't have it shared, um, open space reserve would be reduced from two hundred thirty-one five ninety-five to two hundred two thousand four nineteen. And this is what we voted on at the annual town meeting. Historic reserve would be reduced from one hundred four thousand two eighteen to ninety-three one seventy-eight. Housing is reduced from 115,798 to 101,209. The same for the recreation reserve. The general reserve, um, we would be, the only thing we put into the general reserve is from the state match. And so that would be 34,827. And administrative expenses would be reduced from 115. 80 to 8031. So these are the annual town meeting. So when we did the annual town meeting, we also put the state match in. And then we did Correct. the state match again. So when you, for us accountants, we have to estimate yeah. when we're coming up with your budget at annual town meeting what the match is going to be. So when you voted at special town meeting because the state delayed, we didn't have a number. And it was under, you did it by percentages, and those percentages differed from the percentages you voted in May. So that is changing the way the, the funds are being allocated. Because I had to back out the match out of May, yeah. keep still the May percentages for the buckets, and then reallocate the match based on the vote you made at special town meeting. I could basically send a step by step if you guys want to see it of the um, estimate with the percentages, showing it backed out, and then showing the percentages you voted at special town meeting. But at the annual town meeting, wasn't that only the 1% surcharge? We would no, have you have to include the match in your estimate. I don't think we did that. Then. So the difference between all of these figures and the reductions, that's what, about 65000 I mean, is that the way to look at this? Yeah, and I can give you the math if you guys want. I can send an email to Carolyn and just show you guys the math if you want to see the math. Yeah, if you have it prepared, that would probably be good just to... So does this mean that at spring town meeting we need to make any kind of announcement that this was reduced in the overall? This is going to go through the February town meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. The special to get that cleaned up and then we can go forward. Okay. Mm. All right. So at the annual town meeting, I don't think we did the state match at the annual. Oh, my computer. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't. I trust Alicia's. Alicia, if you already have the math, would you mind just emailing it to us? You get it yes. To yep. I'm just going to create a table so it makes it easy so you can follow. Okay. So we want to we want to vote on this so it gets on to the um, the February special town meeting. 
So I think the amounts that I just read, we can just use for the, the motion. Am I allowed to make a motion? Madam Chair, since I have it in front of me? Yeah, sure. Is that yeah. why I don't know? Nobody does, but. Are the um, numbers in email? <laughs> are, are you um, working on yes. the one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right, the, the okay. open space okay. 231, 595 okay. to 230. Hey, Carolyn, you can even word a motion and then somebody could so move it. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> That's typically how it's Is it the there. whole block of numbers all the way down to yes. administrative 8031? Yes, that's that's what the warrant will, will read. So um, we'll have a motion to uh, amend the CPA numbers that were voted on at the special town meeting and annual. How do I word that? <laughs> Um, read to redistribute the CPA match for the special town meeting percentage vote and the estimate at the annual town meeting. As listed below. As listed below. And then again, we can just use that whole block. All right, you're going to have to say the motion. Yeah, yeah we'll thanks. That. Um, make a motion to redistribute the CPA match per the estimate at annual town meeting and the actual percent um, and the and the and the percentages voted on at the special town meeting which was all in there. Is that what I mean, Alicia? Yep. So I would, what I would do is I would vote to amend the uh, um, CPC vote at the annual town meeting to reduce it by the state match as redistributed by the percentages voted at special town meeting. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can do that on the board. <laughs> Second, second, all right, second <laughs> by Saul. Um, all in favor of the uh, the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. And we'll get we can get the direct wording met from the recording once we get that. Thanks, Alicia, for yeah. Thank you. Tour. I've been extra extra conservative, so you don't ever have to go through this again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if there's more, it doesn't matter, right? Correct. Yeah, they gave us a number, and then they would not agree to the percentage amount that they said. So yeah. all the CPC community, communities across the state, we all estimated up yeah. what we thought we were going to get, and it actually went down, and I think that's why they voted. Yeah. Because I wasn't even expecting that extra payment. Mm. Well, mind-boggling, but okay. Um, thank you. And then at their next meeting, we're going to have to vote for the percentages for fiscal year 24. Um, and that yes. will go into special town meeting. I mean, uh, uh, at, in the spring town meeting? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the regular annual town meeting. I'll send you that along with the uh, grid for this as well. Okay. All right. Okay, good. Uh, and speaking of, um, we had talked about um, moving from a three from a one percent surcharge to a three percent surcharge on our property taxes to fund. Oh, that's right. Um, so we were going to put some numbers together. I I requested to be on the um, finance committee meeting next week. I haven't heard back from Tyler whether we are or not, and Brian couldn't make it tonight. So um, hopefully we are on that just for some preliminary discussion because we kind of, this is again, we gotta push this through. The town is kind of pushing to um, to make this happen if, if, if it goes through. We had talked about maybe doing it for next year, but the longer you put it out, as I think Alicia alluded to in the conversation we had is we lose a whole year of the state match. So the sooner it goes through, 
the quicker we can capitalize on that return, which definitely makes sense. I don't know if it's going to be a hard sell this year. I mean, everybody's, you know, property taxes, everybody's kind of, got, you know, all up and on. Yeah. We can only try. A direct jump to 3% might be a little tricky. I, I was thinking maybe even maybe a baby jump to two at most I, for now might be a reasonable thing. But yet a lot of people have expressed mm -hmm. concerns with the uh, tax bills going up so drastically within the last year to hit them with another punch mm. would hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, depending on your property. Yeah. I had I had looked at some um towns around us and like what the percentages that, that people have. Um the percentages go from any there's a couple of towns that have 0.5 percent. Um so there's 194 towns that have CPA, right? According to the list I have here, the bulk of them, 76 of those, are 3% communities. And then the next highest is 1%, and then 1.5%. So they even go up to a, a half a percentage. Um, and then 2%. And there's a smattering at, you know, 1.25%. How many are at 2%? Um, two percent, only nineteen of one hundred and ninety-four, so not very many at all, really. Um, around us, I know, like air is weird. They've changed their percent, like every year they change their percentage. I don't know what their rationale is, um, but it's it's kind of uh, there's really no rhyme or reason. You know, I, I was kind of looking at what I would consider an affluent community versus not so affluent, and that doesn't seem to really matter. Um, so, I wonder how many towns have started low and gone increase it, or they just go into three percent when it's first proposed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, I, I don't know how you can find out. I just happened to see air because I'd seen it happen. So, did you say they move back and forth? Yes, they've gone up and then they've gone back. They have some amount of. Yeah, based on projects or yeah, that's something. possible because they may have had something big they wanted to get up, and that might have been like their sell to the town. You know, we'll do it this year and then we'll go back, roll it back. But geez, you'd be going back and forth. Yeah, I feel like it's like a new tax that will never go away once it's in. Yeah. And do we, do we have any estimates of what the difference is, or I, I what the the surcharge amount is on a either an average or per thousand basis or what the if you could you know, yeah i know for littleton too we have exempt we're exempt from the first hundred thousand dollars of your property right um so we have that's the kind of thing we'll have to get from finance committee or assessors or whoever does it so right now we are getting Alicia how much did we get last year for the one percent was it 200 something Pro oh, for the state match no for the what the surcharge the one percent surcharge uh, mm -hmm. what it for revenue? Uh, yeah how much did we get in was it uh, should know that 500 So collected for fiscal year 2022 was uh, net surcharge raised of 361, 726, 31. So 360,000, so we get over a million dollars. And at 3%. At 3%. 3%. But 2% would still be a 100% increase. So yeah. we're looking at. Yeah, six. Don't make me do math on camera, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Seven hundred twenty thousand. So still, like you say, we it would double what we have. 
And maybe that's one way to soften the blow. What do other folks think of Andrew's idea of two percent versus three percent? I'm interested to I I don't I don't have an opinion right now, but it might I might in a little time because what I'd love to hear is maybe some background information too, because um although I've discussed it aloud in various contexts. I've never made a proposal or been so bold to say that the moment is now, but someone in town is saying that, and I don't feel like it's us at this moment. So I wonder what the background is. Do you do you know in you know where this came from? Why the timing? Why now? Well, I think because the state the state it. match has gone. I mean, the, basically we had talked about it, but the town is pushing us to to put it through now rather than wait you know we had talked about waiting a year so we could mm -hmm. you know, put plans in place but i think because the state match is so high right now they're hoping to get that that match in the return because because blended funds haven't really come through obviously we're not getting the blended funds like we thought we were so we're kind of stuck at that one percent and only getting the state match on that much money so if you could get the state match on a million on a million dollars, but hasn't that hasn't that situation happened numerous times over the past fifteen or twenty years? Oh, fifteen or twenty. Well, back when Keith was, you know, really diligent about getting us the the blended funds were a huge help because it, it was as if we had three percent mm -hmm. for the longest time. But unfortunately, I think a lot of it was mitigation funds and. Other, you know, monies that we're using to dip in, they're not really existent anymore. So it's. I'm just curious, based on what you said about air, how they go up and down. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious whether or not there was somebody over there that we could talk with that uh, that can tell us what is the, the perception and and um, mm -hmm. conversation like when they have to go from a lower number to a to a higher percentage mm. and what are their their key talking points talking, for right yeah. yeah it'd be interesting to see any other towns that have, have actually jumped and right and how it was yeah. you know how it was taken right? maybe they do it for I mean I'm just hypothesizing maybe they do it when they have a special project that they know they really want to get through or something. Right. And that might have been why they jumped it for one year and yeah. I can't remember what projects they've done, but and would it help for us to get input from the finance committee that you're meeting with next week? Or well, that's why I kind of wondered. That's why I wanted to kind of get on their on their agenda to see what they what they're thinking. So maybe we should wait to vote until at least we hear from the finance committee and maybe yeah or something. Yeah, I don't really think I'm ready to vote about it tonight, but just kind of get us thinking and because we're going to have to put some numbers together and you know we will okay. and uh oh go ahead alicia so uh, the finance committee could meet with you on the 7th because they're doing the joint budget meetings which have already been posted all the agendas but they can meet with you on the 7th of march 7th of march, march? Or february. february i'm sorry february oh. i apologize february yeah. Okay. Which committee was that? FinCon. Okay. Or maybe instead of having next Tuesday, that would give us give some time to look up some information for them. That's what I needed. Was like what kinds of questions we wanted to to talk about before. We start talking, you know, outside this group. Um, Ryan Ferrara, the assistant town administrator, said that they would help us with, you know, once we decide we're going to do it, they would help us with the legwork and putting the motions together and everything, which was. I was just going to ask in other towns, what groups have proposed this and supported it and pushed it? Town, right. Is it, the, is it the town itself or is it an organization in? Non-municipal affiliated housing trust. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, it's a very well could be. Right. Has the select board discussed this at all? 
I don't think so. I mean, I think that's our, our next step, you know, because that's what I was kind of thinking is if we had met with FinCon next week, maybe the next board of selectmen meeting so that we could, it's one of those chicken and egg thing, you know, who do you talk to first? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we thought if we could get the finance stuff together, then we could go to the select boards and get there. If I understand it and talk with Rick Finley, the original idea was pushed and supported by the and Conservation Trust outside group. Oh, okay. they sort of got the interest off, and they were the ones that got all the signatures and put it on the warrant back in the day, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, Rick and Don, and yeah. Well, that's that was the feeling I had at at our a meeting in this past fall when when some when we were talking oh, about it, and I I recall that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, I, I didn't feel comfortable promoting it. As just in terms of the optics, I think it really is something that demands grassroots efforts. And then I think also because um, having people other than us there, I mean, it could be us, but with partners, we we want people who are our stakeholders to describe what they plan to do with the money. If we're asking for more money, it, it needs to have a, a stated purpose. And I think that's only going to be reasonable from the stakeholders themselves. If we as a committee say we want more money because of the hard job that we do, you know, having people come to us and tell them no, you know, that that's not enough money. Well, I mean, that's why all of our constituent boards need to tell us why, you know, park and rec, what do you have planned that's going to cost, you know, are you going to be renovating Indian Hill at some point or you know how what's going to happen down there I mean like, there's all right. kinds of all kinds of stuff up in the ether that um right. Dr. Rex is a big, big stakeholder in this because they got a fair amount of opportunity to get funds from CPC. Mm. Mm. yeah and this I don't know other towns are but this town Park and Rec mm. benefits from CPC. Mm. CPA. And then how and that, if you were we always you, got our hand out. <laughs> get to do something with it though. We are doing stuff with it. Um but if there's I mean, would you be involved in any of the, the development of town? Any of those? Would you, do you get involved if there's like well we're certainly you know talking to developers about low-income housing. We're working with Habitat on a site. We're, um, we've got a couple of sites in, in play. We've got um, three programs that are helping people stay in affordable housing that are, they're in now. Um, so, I mean, we're having a hard time getting you know, things moving you know, because you know we need RFPs and you know town council is slow and selectmen are slow and um so there's there's delays built into our process but we are are uh, agitating for, for housing and we're um trying to develop two properties that we are I mean the Mary Brown property we were supposed to be given two acres and uh, or an acre and a half and it's, it's just very slow making that stuff happen. Yeah. But we've got another property down at the Dorothy Farm. Oh, yeah. The farmhouse, right? Yeah. So I mean, that transaction is going to happen, but um, there's some details to be ironed out. And, and uh, we're looking, we're going to write an RFP and see who responds. I mean, we're not developers, but we mm -hmm. need to find people that are. Um, can I say one thing? Yes, Jim Finley. Uh, hi, I, I was joining you tonight because of this 3% possibility. And I would just like to say that uh, going back to the beginning of the CPC committee, you know, we were hopefully shooting to get to 3% um, as soon as possible. And I think um, it would be a good time. Now there are some uh, land acquisition projects, a Lyle Webster's property for one, that's gonna be looking for funding in the, in the near future. So I would just, this is from my point of view, I'm not sure I'm speaking for the Conservation Trust, but I suspect I am. Um, I would go for the 3%. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
at this point. I think we should have we should have been going for it all along, right from the beginning. Um, but we had other things going on ten years ago that you know kept us from doing that. But I think we want to join the majority of towns that are at three percent, uh, and then. I think what they were doing is they're building up their funds. And once their funds got up to a certain point, they said, okay, we don't have to do this anymore. And then they would back off and they'd spend the funds and then they would come back on. But I think um, that sort of makes sense too. So building on what Mitt said before, do you think, Rick, that the Conservation Trust would be willing to advocate for this at town meeting in the spring? I would believe so, yes. I'm not saying I'll be the one, but right. uh, <laughs> they may be able to speak better than I do. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. I think Mitt, Mitt made a good point. It might be, it would be good to have grassroots partners to promote this. Sure, no, definitely. I think the Conservation Trust would be behind it 100%. I think we have been hoping to go to the 3%, you know, long, long, long time ago. And with Rick, this is Mitt. What yep. do you think about the timing in terms of uh, mobilization, so to speak? Is it if if um, if the springtime meeting came around, would there be enough time to ask people to, you know, knock on doors more than just step up to the microphone? Because it's it would be, I, I think. It's a real crapshoot to put to promote such a huge change, and then to bring it to town meeting without having knocked on doors or sent out flyers or something. And and so I, I think that's why having an, uh, a group like the Littleton Conservation Trust take a lead on this would be really helpful because it, it risks a lot to go to town meeting and have it fail on that day because of pressure at the microphone. And everybody, everybody's pocketbook worries. Um, it takes a real vision, I, I, I believe. I think so. Um, so. Is there enough time? Is my question. <coughs> I think there is. I think there is. I, I think um, the resistance is going to come from people who are going to be there, probably anyway. But I think my feeling is that in the past. Um, something like this has has gone through with a majority vote. So it's just a matter of having people who can speak for it at town meeting and talk about the idea of preserving land or you know whatever else is uh, comes up on whether it's park and rec or whatever. Um, we need to we need to have these funds uh, because going for grants is 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 a real long shot and a lot of them are matching anyway. So you have to have some funds there. So I was going to ask as a representative of CONSCOM, mm -hmm. um, what does that process look like? Does, does this group have a joint meeting with that group or how has this been done in the past? Or what would you recommend? With the trust or? Yeah. Typically, I mean, the trust and the commission work very closely when it comes to land acquisition. The trust is very good at identifying uh, parcels that are going to be coming up for sale potentially. And I find that a lot of times on the commission side, it's very reactive. When a property comes up for sale, you don't know when it's going to happen. But when it does and the town has an interest, if the property has certain values for conservation, uh, the town has to go after it and figure out a funding plan. And, the trust has been very, very helpful in coordinating CPA monies, other grants, along with Amy uh, in the past. So the two groups work very closely together. Just a quick question. Is it, is, does it happen at a town meeting vote or a ballot vote? Town meeting. Town meeting. And I think one thing we had asked Alicia and she agreed that like if if we vote it in say November, if we hold off, it still isn't till the next fiscal year that it would be in place. I think is what she said. So it's not like we could vote it in in November and have everything change over then. 
Is that right, Alicia? If if we vote the um, the three percent, say we hold off until November special town meeting, when do we get to start collecting that three percent? Does it wait for the next fiscal year? I believe it's going to start um, in the next fiscal year. If you did it in yeah, if you did it in the fall. Yeah. It seems like the, the, the push to keep all of the major budgeting things at annual town meeting is an appropriate. It's appropriate for annual town meeting, yeah. either no. this one or next one. Yeah, yeah I kind of agree too. Um, Amy Green had suggested, um, like putting together because we have a list of the projects that we have done in the past, and, and you know, explain, hey, look what we've been able to do with what we've done. And then think of what we could do, you know, kind of. Um... There are a lot of potential projects down the pipeline for the money. I, I just don't want to like hit the taxpayers too hard this time around. So it's, it's a tough balance. So right. I don't know if the jump to 2% would satisfy that for now. I mean, it would give us another 100% mm -hmm. increase in funding, but. We'll just do a little more fact finding for now and yeah. see how that would impact maybe the average taxpayer in town. And yeah, and if they're like, even if it's pie in the sky kind of projects, like a park and rec, or, or I mean, conservation, Rick just said there's a couple of coming up, things that you know it, you're not even ready to, to do, but what if? If we had more money, we could probably do this. I mean, historic too. I mean, you know, we have property we want to purchase, or I don't know what we could ever possibly do. But um, I think maybe that too is showing the town, hey, if we had more money, this is what we could do. Um, um, you know, housing obviously is a big one too. If you had, you know, mm -hmm. a lot more money, could you buy a parcel of land yourself? You could buy a parcel or you could go with a developer and pay him the difference between a market rate and an affordable unit and get more affordable that way. So I think those are like the more concrete examples that so people understand why we're enjoying the increase. I think also the, you know, the fact that we're getting a 20 plus percent return on the state match, right. if there are projects that qualify for this funding then there's nowhere else you're going to get that value out of, right. out of the money right and i think that was kind of the town's impetus was say hey, that's a lot of money we're leaving on the table those are like really um and especially if in some cases now i feel like this gets used in place of capital item capital budget stuff um you know if it doesn't you know in, 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 of course we're being recorded aren't we? if it doesn't come out here it's going to come out later when they ask for more money so it's it's all coming from the same pot it just depends on how you how you pull it out but i think we should push ahead you know at the last minute we can all say well we're not ready to do it but i think that we'll have enough backing from the town offices to put it through. Do you think, um, are there other next steps we could take uh, than, than going to town hall? I mean, and it's not, yeah, well, it would just be, if we went to the finance committee, yeah. Maybe I mean that's that makes sense. We get some numbers when we could then distribute that information. It's sort of yeah, we know what they'll say. They'll say yes, it would be good, and here's yeah. here are the facts or whatever. But I guess we need those facts, yeah. whichever way we turn next. And come we'll probably be able to judge the amount of resistance that we would experience on our meeting floor. Now, they're used to dealing with tax increases and what the results, what the Opposition is. And then in the meantime, we can gather some data on other towns, you know, what, what AIR has done, why AIR went up and down. Um, I think the, as Rick said, I think that makes sense. The kind of building, building some money for a project and then backing off. 
Mm -hmm. um, so while on the subject of the finance committee, what, mm -hmm. what would we, if we're asking for an invitation or a joint meeting or whatever mm -hmm. it is, what what would we promote as our agenda item? Get down. You know, what would we ask them to do publicly? Because they'd have to print it and then we meet about it. So I just wonder if we could capture that language now. Well, is it just a discussion on just like what we've had? I mean, go to the finance committee, find out. I mean, what they what they feel again, you know, getting the feel from them, maybe do they think two percent is a better idea? Do they want to go for three? Um, yeah, discussions about a, an increase in the surcharge and yeah. property tax. Basically, what we've just been done here, get their, <laughs> get their, pers their pers from their perspective, and then find out what they would do for us um, going forward or what they think we should do. Um, right, because we need, we need their support to, right. to, to, go, to get any traction. Right, if we go to them and, you know, God forbid they say, no, it's a stupid idea, <laughs> then, you know, if, if they don't, if we don't have their backing, then no one's going to want to back it either. <laughs> Although I suspect they will not say that. So I'll, I'll we'll request to be on the, I'll just make it a joint meeting, then whoever can come can come, and then at least it, it's, it's there, so it looks a little more official for the 7th of February, and that'll give us some time to um, put some thoughts down. If anyone has anything, just let me know. And the um, 7th would be for the joint meeting? With the FinCon, us? for the FinCon. Okay. Yeah. Which is probably a Tuesday. Uh, yeah. And then I would just like to say your constituent boards talk to them and, and let them know what's going on and if we have their any thoughts from them um because you're right i mean we're we're you know six of us are made up from other boards that that uh have invested interest in cpa money right we don't you don't get any with, with the apex where the groups who are looking for funding and we're the place that has the funding right. distributed right and, and, Requirements in that. Right. But I think that we do need to continue to move ahead. Um, Feel better about it after talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll try to make that meeting by all means. Okay. I'll send out a reminder when it comes, comes by. Um, and in the meantime, just try to gather some more information and put some stuff together for them and we can kind of show um you know the different percentages and see if I can find anyone who's moved up and down and what what their thoughts were. Um, okay. All right, I'll let uh Alicia I'll let Ryan know that we what we kind of decided on tonight so that he knows that we're moving ahead. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Good. And I have a question maybe for you, Alicia. If um, we don't need to, could we use you to estimate um, household impacts for hypotheticals if the 3% went through, just like in terms of for, for planning for the presentation? We don't need to do that with the FinCom. We could do that through you, uh, I hope. Yes. Yep. Great. That's nice. Thanks. So we can do that behind the scenes whenever we need to come up with numbers to make a slide or something. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay, good. All right. I guess we have a bit of a plan anyways. Um, I'm going to back off, but thank you very, very much for all you guys are doing. Much appreciated. All right. Thanks, Rick, for joining. Good Rick. Yep. Thanks for Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Can I jump in? <clears throat> so um this is a general question, but it also pertains to the two projects that I proposed and uh you guys uh approved the eligibility tonight for, for historical. Um so and and Alicia, are you still there? 
I'm still here. Oh, okay. Um, so you probably can answer this question. Um, my question is, so section six of the CPA, I've been reading the CPA a lot lately, <laughs> says that funds that are set aside shall be held in the community preservation fund and spent in that year or later years. So let's say the two projects that I proposed tonight get approved at special town meeting in May. Can I go ahead, can, can we, the historic commission, go ahead right after town meeting and start using those funds? Or do we have to wait till fiscal year, the next fiscal year in July to start using those funds? It, uh, they're supposed to be the next, since it's annual, it's supposed to be the next fiscal year, July. Even if we already have money in reserve, if we vote from, from the reserves, because the money's sitting there. I, I emailed Chase, I haven't heard from him. Um, from CPC, because that's what we were wondering. We were talking about at the commission meeting is if the money's sitting there, we have a pot of money. Why can't we use that now? I think you could. I think the way we would have to do it is, and I'll, I would have to talk to legal, is possibly put it as a separate motion or separate article. But I, I'll find out from them. Maybe we could include it and just put effective a certain date so that it's not really a part of the annual which starts July 1 it it's effective but I would want to talk to um town mm -hmm. council yes I would appreciate that could you do that um because for both of these particular projects I would really we would really like to get going immediately after town meeting and I, I understand the fiscal year issue and mm -hmm. so if we could get an answer on that that would be very helpful thank sure. you That might be something to keep in mind for the future. Mm -hmm. Put an effective date along with a request. Mm -hmm. to keep it legal. Yeah. Yeah, whether it's coming out of what's being appropriated or what's already sitting in the pot. Yeah. yeah. In the bucket. All right. Alicia, do you have anything else for us for budgety, budgety kind of things? Uh no. All right. Now I'm just putting together the um the surcharge and so I put in the estimated surcharge for 5222 at 408596 and I have it from the assessor at 4156762 estimated interest at 1817 I didn't put interest in your new breakout I just put it to zero but it's going to be higher and you have a new bank account the treasurer has decided instead of doing calculations at the end of every year they created a bank account which will have interest put in there each oh, good. and the match I estimated at 168 we got it in at 139306 any other budgety things anyone has any projects in the pipeline we have one coming in from so uh, I will be uh, filing one for the um, preservation of gravestones at uh, Westland Cemetery um for the next meeting Bartlett yeah. um your annual sweep of the yes yes and an annual an annual report from the trust if we could okay we'll have some trust as we Okay. Um, at our next meeting, we will have minutes upon minutes upon minutes to approve. Yes. So many minutes, there'll be an hour. Uh, <laughs> we are woefully, oh, we'll be embarrassingly. Oh, yeah, that's right. I will admit it to the public. We have, um, we'll get those ready. So, our next meeting, so we'll we'll request that meeting on the September, on September, geez, on, um, February 7th with the FinCom. Our next meeting would be February 15th, which is the third Wednesday. I but think that's not meeting. 
Oh, come oh, that's on. Right. All right. We can either go. Yeah. We could do that. <laughs> Excuse us, CPC has to meet first. Thank you. It's been how long, how much time we need before. If we did like a six o'clock meeting, it would be a long evening. It would be. That's true. Hopefully, it'll be a short meeting. Although, it might be a short town meeting. Well, no, it won't be. There's considering. Oh, yeah. A couple of them. So, um, through, through the chair, um, yeah. I just wanted to let you know I worked with um, LELWD and uh, the lawyer to have them release from escrow that LELWD grant that was voted to come to the CPC. Oh. So that's going to get deposited soon. So I just got the check not too long ago. Oh, good. So, Which, yeah. here. We're ready to go back to date. Sorry. Oh, Oh, that's good. So we might be able to use that soon. That wasn't clear to me what the grant was. It's the um the money from um the sale of two well two forty two King Street. The um it was a private donation. Two hundred thousand. Yeah. Good. That's a good reference. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so we could either, um, I hate pushing it. When did, Alicia, do you know when the warrant closes for our annual town meeting? It's probably going to be early, right? Yeah, yeah, I would check with Ryan on that. Okay. Yeah, I meant to look that up today. But because the first is, um, like the, the first, the Monday is the first. So town meeting is. If, unless they change it, they were, they were talking about changing it. Yeah, but I heard they wouldn't affect this year because there was a problem. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, okay. I'm not, I heard that. So if town meeting is on the first, that makes the the warrant close earlier than. Oh, mm -hmm. so what I was going to suggest is or offer up is that we have the FinCon meeting on the seventh. Mm -hmm. um, Thursday the 9th, this is sort of an announcement or anything else, but um, the MBTA uh, work that is going on for the train station, the village common, or excuse me, the, 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 <laughs> the, uh, Littleton station. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> is having a workshop that evening on oh. Thursday the 9th from 6 to 6 to 7.30 PM. So that's just a general announcement for anybody who's interested in that. Uh, it will be virtual. So then if we were to meet the following week, it would need to be on the 13th or 14th. Of February? Yeah. yeah. If if we still wanted to have our meeting um, in February because of the town meeting, the special yeah. meeting. What? Oh, the 15th is Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Um, hey, Clan. No. <laughs> 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 always, always, always. <laughs> On the thirteenth, is that a selectman meeting? This is when it gets sticky because everybody's. I prefer not Mondays. Just okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, the, what was what day was your thing on the little so the, um Right, so it's a it's a, a planning board meeting that's a, on Thursday the ninth from six to seven thirty p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know the Wednesday before is the commission meeting, a historical right. commission meeting, and I think that's a PMBC, right? You meet on the second and fourth too. Wednesdays? It's all Yeah. All yeah, that would be the second Wednesday. Um, unless we go to the next week. But those are short names. Well, that's true. Yeah, we usually end by like 7.09. 7.25. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do we have 
is it business related to the town meeting or is it yes yeah, yeah we'll have projects coming in and so okay. i mean not for which town meeting uh, annual. Okay. Okay. but so we don't have to meet a deadline for the february town meeting no, no, we we did all our business tonight that we needed to. So uh, the warrant closes March first at the moment. Is that true? Well, it's probably was it six weeks? So yeah. one, two, three, four, but mid March. Oh, and that's I mean, but that's also typically if you can then get the items on, they don't need to be. Finished. Well, that's true. That and, and Ryan had mentioned that as well. I mean, we always had it, you know, so we had everything right. numbers right. ready, but as long as we put a placeholder in that says we're gonna do this, we just don't have the details. Yeah, the printing comes the printing deadline comes later and then there's the insert deadline. Yeah. I just hate losing a February meeting. Oh well, we can't oh could we how yeah, but don't we have to do that I mean, in we, February? Well, we should. I mean, we could vote on all those projects in March as long as there's no questions. Oh, you know, is that the baby? I'm something in February. Yeah. So the 15th or the 22nd are those dates? The 15th, the 15th is town meeting. And what about the 22nd? And if we meet at, say, 7 15, we could do like minutes first and then, and then. You'd be probably done your PMBC meeting yeah. by then, or we could hold start it later than seven or something. Was was saying like seven oh, fifteen ish like or seven thirty? I mean, that's um, I don't know why that sounds so late these days. If you start an hour on that, it's good for PMBC. You could watch it on your. So February twenty second. February twenty second. Do you want to meet it? Do you want to meet at seven or seven fifteen? Seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah, we're we'll getting lots of minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. We might not be done by the time you get back. Is, is the twenty second good with everybody? Yeah, it works. All right. So February twenty second will be the next CPC meeting at seven. And um, seems like in person seems to be good. We'll do we'll do the hybrid again with now that we know how to set up the owl. And then we should meet, um, try to plan to meet on, on March, would be March 15th, would be the third Wednesday. So as long as the, the warrant, we'll see when that closes, but that probably should be okay. And we may end up meeting with the select board before that too on the percentage. So just make sure I let everybody know. All right. And um, the seventh for the income. Yes. And like I say, I'll post that just so it looks official. So if you really want to. Anything else? Is that that's a seven also? I think so. I'll see what I'll okay. have to find out when they put us on the agenda. It's the online band counts for seven. Oh, um, seven. Yeah. There's something every night, except for Friday, and nobody wants to be on Lyceum. Lyceum is on Friday. This this coming Friday. Yeah, no big deal. J. Eric Dolan. J. J. R. Dolan, he writes, he's an author, he wrote uh, Rebels at Sea about the privateering during the American Revolution. So. Yeah. A brain chocolate. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. We have a motion to adjourn. Bartlett, would you so move? So moved. <laughs> so seconded. Let's <laughs> hurry in there. Since I get to adjourn, we'll just. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, um, all in favor of ending the meeting? Aye. Aye. Alicia, you can fin you can stop recording. And thank you so much for joining us again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Alicia. Good night.